Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Connection. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Well, sir, it is a marvelous Monday. A great day to be alive in the Lord, declaring the good news of Jesus Christ and having BB, Sarah Nathanus, and you on the controls. Well, I got it, man. You just, you just made me look bad. I, I forgot to say good morning to BB, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, after all, he, he, he was first. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> good news that is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who will hear it, receive it, believe it, and take it to heart. For it is the gospel that is declared in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 to be the power of God unto salvation. That is to, to bring us into what God has provided for us in the Lord Jesus Christ as he put himself in harm's way in order to save us, in order to save the day and to save our lives and save our very existence and our eternity, bring us to the purpose and plan that God has for us. What is that plan? That plan is, as we have declared often, it is the simple truth that the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, that those who he foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his own son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That is to say, that just as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father, uh, from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should walk in that same newness of life. That's Romans chapter six, verse four. Well, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus described how he had gotten up and he declared that in all, all power in heaven and in earth have been given unto me. And he's turned to his disciples and said, now you go. You go with this authority, with this power. This is not a new paradigm. It is God revealing it through the covenant that he made it with his son. But it is simply an affirmation of what God designed us to be in creating us in his own image and likeness from the very start in Genesis chapter 1. Accordingly, uh, we've been talking about the importance of understanding how we were shaped and formed in the image of likeness of God and embracing the power of it. It is an empty thing to uh, listen to the truth that we are created in the image and likeness of God and hear it only as poetry and not realize that with that was an investment that came from God uh, in making us as such to in order that we might live from and in that basis. What do you mean by that? That is to say that we should live as his sons. And the scripture says, if we're sons, then we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ, our Father God. That's both written in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, and reiterated again over in Galatians chapter 4. Two different witnesses letting us know this, this position of being a joint heir with Christ, our Father God. I started off talking about how Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth. Uh, are, are, are now his when he got up and rose again 
uh, that uh, that means that what he has and what he has inherited from God the Father, that we are joint heirs to it. You know what Jesus said? He said concerning the Holy Spirit, we think about uh, his promise in Acts chapter 1 that we would receive power to become his witnesses after that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes on us. But it's interesting to note that Jesus in St. John 16, as he's describing what the Holy Spirit would come to do, he says, first of all, that is more profitable to you that I go away. For if I do not go away, uh, the comforter will not come. He says, I have many things to say to you, but you're not able to receive them. But when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you and guide you into all the truth. He will not testify of himself. He will testify of me. He will take of mine and reveal it unto you. He will show you things to come. When we talk about the power of God and the power of God at work in us, we cannot uh, talk about that without relating it to the presence and work of the Holy Spirit. Truth is an empowering, an empowering uh, force of life. It is an empowering principle of life. It is particularly important in your eternal well-being and existence and in this world because the arch enemy of God and of your soul is a liar. And he, he constantly is seeking to deceive and distract you through lies, things that are not true. So then when the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God to you, the lies of your enemy, the lies of Satan become powerless against you. You can't lie to someone who knows the truth. It's difficult to distract someone who keeps their eyes focused on truth. Truth revealed by the Holy Spirit. Truth revealed by God to our hearts. I believe that's one of the reasons that Jesus said he would lead us and guide us into all the truth. So that we would live empowered lives. Even as we watch the things that go around, around us, the temptations, trial, tests of our faith, the challenges that we come up against, we would not be deceived and distracted to think that we're hopeless or powerless, but that we would rise in the power of the Holy Spirit to live above it and not only live above it, but to reach out to others and help them up and help them to live above the challenges and temptations, trials and circumstances and challenges of life. Today, friend, I just want you to know this, that God has given us and sent his spirit into our hearts for the purpose of bringing us to truth. In order that <clears throat> we may live liberty and freedom and free from bondages and to be those who bring others out of bondages and, and bring deliverance and, and provision in this world. Hey, today, let's go in the strength and the power of God's spirit, knowing that that's why he has come and he rests in and upon us. This has been an outreach of Connected Church. Connect with us, connected.church.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, right here every single day on this Gospel Explosions outreach to the Tennessee Valley and beyond as God is uplifted, his word declared, his love revealed, and your faith might be firmly fixed in him and his love for you, the identity that we have in him, that together we are the difference that makes the difference that God intends, we desire, and the world needs as we awaken this purpose of knowing him and his love for us, mobilize his mission of making him known, and sharing his love with others. That's good news on this marvelous Monday morning. I couldn't have put it any other way, Pastor. You took the words right out of my mouth. And BB too. Hey, we look forward to talking to you again on Wednesday, but we'll be listening at you on Tuesday with another Christ in Action broadcast. Yes, sir. Blessings on you and the Gospel Explosion family. Have a great day today. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Hey, it's all right. Well, hey, let's go in the strength and ability of God today, knowing that he has given us his spirit to keep us grounded and focused upon truth, that we will never, ever be deceived or distracted by the lies of the enemy, and that we can share those truths with others to lift them up and cause them to walk in the freedom and liberty 
of sons of God. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.